same as last time. And of course, it's still the same top two candidates. But um, it's going to be very different, though, isn't it, for the next two weeks and heading into the second round? Well, there are several surprises, even though the actual result itself, I think, for many people is not a surprise because right from the very start, from back in 2017, uh, a lot of pundits were saying, well, look, the, the, the chances are that uh, the next time round we will see the same duel again between Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron in 2022. Well, they were right. We did see the same duel. Uh, we will see the same duel for the second round between Emmanuel Macron uh, and Marine Le Pen. Uh, I think what has changed since then is uh, we've seen the total disintegration of the traditional parties in France, the traditional right, the uh, Républicain, the Gaullist party. Remember, this was the party of uh, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, of Jacques Chirac, didn't even manage to score 5%, the candidate uh, Valérie Pécresse, uh, on 4.8%, 4.9%. So it's been a total disaster for that party. And even worse for the Socialist Party, the party of François Mitterrand and the former president before uh, Emmanuel Macron, François Hollande, uh, which has got even less than 2% uh, with its candidate Anne Hidalgo, the uh, current mayor of Paris. Now, that is... Disastrous news for both of those parties, not only because they did so badly, but also disastrous news because if they get less than 5% of the vote in the first round, that means they don't get their, uh, all their funds reimbursed by the, uh, the French government. So they're looking at not only a disaster of fall in polling numbers, but a huge bill to have to pay. So many people are saying, well, look, has this election not only marked... Uh, well, the, the second term for Emmanuel Macron will wait to see what's going to happen in two weeks' time. But has it also uh, signed the death knoll of France's traditional right and France's traditional left, which have now been replaced by Emmanuel Macron, who has uh, more or less, I think, been responsible for de demolishing that by taking on board uh, members of those two movements into his party, uh, the Republic on the Move. And uh, it also uh, solidifies the grip of the far right in France. Remember that uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen, the father of Marine Le Pen, uh, got through to the second round for the first time in 2002. And we've seen a repetition of that since then, uh, and Marine Le Pen again through to the second round of voting. Claire Tormann, let's bring you in um, here. How do you think Emmanuel Macron supporters will be uh, feeling now a few hours after these uh, results uh, first fell, the estimated results, which uh, we expect to be confirmed a little bit later on? I mean, do you think they'll be feeling confident going into the second round, or do you think they should be rather worried? Sorry, are you asking me? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, I think um, I think they they're not very confident. That's what they show. I think the first round um, gave them a relief, as we've heard, um, uh, because uh, we've seen that the polls were going down for them, especially last week. So I think uh, all the Macron clan and a lot of foreign observers and American observers were really relieved to see that it has such a big advance on the first round. But let's be clear, not, as they said, nothing is done and they still have a long road to go. Um, and I think the second surprise I wanted to, to complete on what's been said is that Mélenchon has been so high. Uh, it was not really expected uh, to be that close. And I think it really shows something interesting in French politics. It's a complete reorganization of the parties uh, around three poles that so the far left, um, the far right, and the center. And those, uh, some observers like Grunberg call it tripolarization and say it's a new organization of the political field in France. And we see that those three polls now have almost 75% of the vote. So as has just been said, uh, the, the um, disappearance of the uh, Parti Socialiste and um, Les Républicains for the right, traditional right parties are part of this complete reorganization of the field. And that's a big event for tonight or yesterday. OK, well, let's talk about um, Marine Le Pen and her supporters as well. Uh, of course, uh, her supporters uh, also gathered after the uh, results came in last night. Let's hear what they had to say. I'm really, really happy because uh, she she has a better score than uh, five years ago, and uh, she is the only person that really can do something for France because France has to come back to French people. Tout à fait heureux de ce de ce résultat. 
qui qu'on qu pressentait, qu'on sentait là depuis quelques jours, depuis quelques semaines. Donc vraiment, c'est un très très beau résultat et qui nous donne des ailes pour la, pour la suite et pour le deuxième tour. Ce résultat est formidable, il est dans la dynamique. Euh, voilà, donc euh, c'est absolument formidable. So Marine Le Pen then also addressing her supporters, uh, those uh, especially who'd not voted for her in the first round, to vote for her in the second. Franz Villeneau was there for us. Well, there were big smiles all around here at Marine Le Pen's uh, election party. Uh, as soon as those results came in, they popped a special bottle of champagne. Marine Présidente 2022. So that gives you uh, the tone of the evening here. People uh, giving each other high fives, slapping each other on the back, taking selfies. And then, of course, Marine Le Pen cheered as she gave a very a jubilant victory speech. Uh, she said she was thrilled to be in the second round and that it was a really a, a rematch of 2017, two opposing visions of France. Uh, she stuck to her program in that speech, a very presidential tone there. We spoke to a lot of the uh, supporters here, many of them very young, who say Marine Le Pen is their candidate for the youth here in France. They say uh, they're thrilled with her message, that's, uh, especially uh, everything she has to say about purchasing power and they say that she's learned her lessons from 2017 she's much more calm much more presidential so all eyes are on the second round but now it's all about celebrating Flo Vilmano there so let's um, go back to our guest Claude Claire uh, Tormen joining us there from California I mean what do you think about the far right I mean it's possible they could uh, Marine Le Pen could be the next president of France yeah, totally possible. And uh, the last polls before the first round were giving um, Macron at um, 51 and Le Pen at 49. So it's in the margin of error. So it's now more possible than ever. And uh, I've seen articles saying that the White House, Joe Biden's White House, is starting to freak out about that possibility that nobody thought would be really probable uh, a few weeks ago only. But Macron has been going down in the poll. Le Pen has been going up and who knows where we're going to be in two weeks right <laughs> philip what do you think i mean we were hearing claire there talking about the the split now in france this three-way split it's very very difficult for whichever candidate does win to try and bring people together isn't it for the for the next five years france has been completely split down the middle and that split we've seen it last night with uh, the results of the, this first round in the election um First of all, uh, Emmanuel Macron in first place, but just behind Marine Le Pen, uh, Emmanuel Macron in the centre, Marine Le Pen on the far right, and then just behind Marine Le Pen, we have Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the far left. So three almost irreconcilable uh, movements in France all vying for that top position. I think one of the big surprises was the high score of Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the far left. He was given, like, uh, first of all, around 10 to 12 per cent, then he went up to 17 per cent. Uh, now, last night, he got 22.2%, uh, just 0.8 uh, less than Marine Le Pen, so almost could have got it got through to the second round himself, which I think a few weeks ago nobody really thought was possible. Uh, the, the problem facing Emmanuel Macron now is where is he going to get the voter reserve from to win the second round? He has a four-point lead over Marine Le Pen in the first round. But if you look at where possible sources of voting are going to come from, uh, Marine Le Pen uh, does have quite a lot of reserve votes. She's got all the votes that went to the far-right candidate Eric Zemmour. He's already told his supporters to vote for Marine Le Pen. She has the votes of another far-right candidate, Nicolas Dupont-Aignan, uh, who got around 1.92 2 percent of the vote. Uh, she will probably pick up some votes from the traditional right, the Republican Party, from Valérie Pécresse's voters. Uh, she got around 5 percent of the vote, 4.5. And she will probably pick up some of the voters of Jean-Luc Mélenchon. And Jean-Luc Mélenchon has already called and said, I do not want a single one of my voters to cast their ballot for Marine Le Pen in the second round. But because of the call in France for the tout sauf Macron, everything but Macron, many of Mélenchon's supporters who would never think about voting for Marine Le Pen would not be able to vote or in their minds for uh, Emmanuel Macron. So instead of casting uh, a ballot which is for neither candidate, just to try to prevent uh, uh, or undermine 
uh, Emmanuel Macron's chances of winning a second round, uh, they will vote for Marine Le Pen. So Emmanuel Macron has got quite a lot of worries, I think, ahead of the, the second round of voting in two weeks' time.